One deepening mystery or mysteries within astronomy are the relatively newly discovered fast radio bursts, highly transient radio pulses that last anywhere from a small fraction of a millisecond to some that have persisted for up to three seconds. No one knows why there is such a variation in the period these can last. These signals are quite powerful. They burst out as much energy in a millisecond as the sun emits in three days. And at this point, there is nothing but hypotheses as to what astrophysical process could be causing them, or if there are multiple origins for them, which there very well may be. These bursts tend to be distant, often very distant, and as a result in radio, they are very dim by the time they reach Earth. Even as powerful as they are at the source, when they get here, they are something along the lines of the signal strength of a cell phone on the moon would be. But we can easily detect that, given how sensitive our radio telescopes are in modern times. They were first discovered in 2007 by Duncan Lorimer and David Narkovic. There is a link to an Event Horizon interview I conducted with Dr. Lorimer in the description below. They found the phenomenon while they were searching through archived data related to pulsar emissions. FRBs can sometimes repeat erratically, but at least one pulses regularly every 16.35 days, FRB 180916. So far only one FRB out of the hundreds known has occurred within the Milky Way. They are mostly extragalactic in nature. Sometimes the emissions can be polarized, which is a clue to the origin of that type of FRB. What causes the polarization is a magnetic field, an extremely powerful one, which would tend to point in the direction of a rapidly rotating neutron star or black hole. However, that can also, in a certain sense, be seen as an alien technosignature candidate. More on that in a bit. Recent work from 2020 onward continues to implicate compact objects like neutron stars and magnetars that have resulted from normal supernovae, which on the whole in the universe are very common, which may be why we see so many fast radio bursts. One particularly long duration example seems to have had a strong association with a neutron star, though the exact mechanism remains unknown. One repeating FRB, known as FRB 121102, has been studied more in depth and is associated with a galaxy about 3 billion light years away, and seems to be a neutron star within an extreme environment of some sort. Interestingly, there is an FRB that corresponds with the location of a known gamma ray burst, a seemingly completely different phenomenon, but possibly not. Even more recent work implicates magnetars specifically in at least one type of FRB. With such a wide variation in behavior, it's difficult to pin down everything to a single cause. Work done last year has shed a bit more light on one type of very persistent FRB, specifically FRB 20201124A, which is about 1.3 billion light years away. It seems to originate in a binary star system that is accreting material in a star forming region at a high rate, causing it to form a plasma bubble, which can create the observed radio emissions for that FRB. But this model may not hold for other FRBs, once again hinting at a complex phenomenon created in varying situations, which would explain the confusion. In some sense, the phenomena kind of look the same, but in another sense, they don't, opening the door for multiple causes, where the end result looks somewhat the same despite being very different. In a recent paper, however, a new FRB was reported, FRB 20240209A, by the CHIME telescope in Canada, this observation was able to get the location of the FRB constrained to just an arc second wide by two arc seconds long window. This allowed optical telescopes like the Keck telescope in Hawaii and the Gemini Observatory to associate this FRB with a bright galaxy that's actually significantly more luminous overall than the Milky Way is. This FRB is about 130,000 light years away from the center of the host galaxy which is the farthest FRB yet seen in a galaxy from the galactic center of the host. Other work was done on the host galaxy itself in tandem with the observation of the FRB to characterize it. This is a huge galaxy with about a trillion stars within it. This is very much larger than the Milky Way. Interestingly, the average age of the stars in that galaxy is about 11 billion years. 
That's unusual for Galaxy hosting an FRB. It's actually really old for that. Indeed, the oldest host galaxy we know of that has hosted an FRB. It was also clear that the star formation of this old galaxy is far less than the Milky Way, so it should have a correspondingly small population of young objects compared to most galaxies that host FRBs. While very old, this galaxy is not that distant, about 2 billion light years away. So we see it as it was 2 billion years ago. Age is sort of a relative term here as well. The Milky Way is also old, 13.6 billion years in a universe 13.8 billion years old. It's just that active star formation rates are higher in this galaxy than the one where the FRB is located. So the average age of its stars is what makes it old and its relative lack of new star formation. But at 2 billion years distant, that's well within technosignature territory because such a civilization would have had ample time to have arisen. And if they looked at the Milky Way, they would see this galaxy essentially as it is now. It hasn't changed that much in 2 billion years. And life on Earth was already in full swing and heading for civilization territory around a relatively young sun. The bottom line, though, is that an exhausted galaxy like this should not host much in the way of magnetars or newly forming giant stars that could go supernova. It should be a very quiet place on that count and should not produce any FRBs. Yet it did. That would imply that whatever caused that FRB was not due to a newly formed stellar object. In fairness, we also don't yet know all the rules for creating magnetars. It may be that two merging neutron stars or white dwarfs or a combination could produce a magnetar in an exhausted galaxy. Or even a white dwarf sitting on the limit of becoming a neutron star, accreting material until it becomes one, and spawns a magnetar for a short time. But that's a big stretch since our understanding of magnetars is such that highly magnetized neutron stars like this come out of core collapse supernovae. This is not likely in a galaxy that cannot generally form giant stars any longer, and the ones it did have long ago went supernova. Complicating this, another FRB found in 2020 was also found to be located inside of a globular cluster in the galaxy M81, where star formation should have long ago stopped. And that cluster is also in the outskirts of its host galaxy. Very puzzling indeed. Some FRBs seem to appear where they should not if the standard suspicion of their origin is correct. But there is room for other origins, but these start getting a bit further out there. One is that dark matter can induce the collapse of a pulsar, producing the effect. But with so little known of dark matter, this remains open. Another is the explosive decay of axion mini-clusters, but that invokes something never before seen in nature. Yet another are cosmic strings interacting in the early universe with plasmas. But this requires cosmic strings. But also an origin point that doesn't seem to fit well with observation. Even the explosion of a black hole has been suggested. Which would actually be the first observation of quantum gravity effects. Which would be beyond huge in physics. Another is more plausible. A pulsar orbiting a black hole with two magnetic fields interacting producing the bursts. But within this is the potential for an alien technosignature. The point is, since no one knows what causes all these FRBs, one thing we have seen comes into play. We are a civilization. We prove such things are possible in the universe. We are someone else's aliens. We produce radio, but nothing on the level of an FRB. But there may eventually be a reason for us to do that. This possibility has surrounded FRBs from the start with multiple researchers over the years floating an alien option for them. A paper by Lingham and Loeb, link in the description below from a number of years ago, suggests that enormous radio beams that might be used to power very large light sails actually might look like an FRB when that radiation leaked. In the paper, they detailed that the size of the beam emitter for a light sail can be comparable to the size of Earth and the optimal frequency for pushing the sail is within frequencies observed for FRBs. Around the same time, about eight years ago, Moaz and Loeb published a paper that if FRBs, whatever the origin, manifest inside galaxies like the Milky Way, then we should see FRBs inside this galaxy every few decades to a millennium or so. 
In other words, they should be common on relatively short timescales for an ancient galaxy. As already noted, at least one seems to have been from here, so this may be correct, or even conservative. Interestingly, this could produce a radio pulse that could be detectable by our devices. The phones, Wi-Fi networks, and GPS systems might actually pick something like this up. In short, there may be an opportunity here to use our devices in a citizen science project to look for close galactic FRBs, potentially very accurately. And measuring pulse arrival times from devices operating at different frequencies could even reveal the source. Determining if such a thing is a magnetar would be one thing. Determining if it is a technosignature is another. What would definitely change the game is if the FRB did not originate from a deep space environment, but instead an otherwise normal looking star system, perhaps like our own. We're the only thing here that could conceivably produce a huge radio burst like this. So if that origin was implied by a close FRB, then we would be in very interesting territory indeed. And indeed, very ancient galaxies that seem to inexplicably produce FRBs also happen to be the ones that may have already spawned ancient, highly advanced civilizations. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently giving a factoid about magnetars. They are actually very short-lived. Their magnetic fields decay after only about 10,000 years, which hammers home why, if an exhausted galaxy isn't creating new ones, then it really should not be producing FRBs in our current models. I would bet those models change in coming years. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.